Hi everyone, how are you? I am Jessica. Now that I showed you how to piece one with oversized pieces, let me show you how I piece one. So with exact size. So I, I'm using the templates that I showed you earlier. I use these templates to cut out all my pieces. And I went just like a touch bigger than a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Somewhere between, somewhere around three eighths of an inch, but it doesn't really matter. These don't have to be exact. That's like the beauty of this. So, um, I am starting with my A1 and I'm going to take my A1 and I set it on there. You can see I have much more of an exact piece. I'm like close to the edge, but what I want to do is I just hold it up. It might be difficult again to see this on the camera, but I'm making sure that I'm past every line by at least a quarter of an inch. And I am, so um, I could glue this down or I could leave it. Now my A2 is on this side. Just like we did before, I'm going to fold this back. I'm finding the line and I'm just holding it just to make a crease mark. Once I have that crease, I'm finding my A2 piece, which is this one. I'm gonna lay it on top and I'm just making sure I'm about a quarter of an inch beyond it. And then I fold it open to test it. I'm making sure that I'm covering every part of this. So I think I want to just give this a touch of a slide up like that. I think that that looks better to me. I have this top corner covered now before it was like sticking out. So I'm gonna hold it together and flip it over. Try not to move everything. That's a little tricky, but you get used to it. And I'm gonna drop my needle here and sew on the line between um, A1 and A2. At the beginning and the end of this, I am back, back stitching. And now you'll see, um, I do have a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna trim some of this away. That was closer to a half of an inch down there. And I'm gonna trim this little bit away. And I have this piece on. So now this side's on. Again, if you wanted to press with an iron here, you could press. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead on to the next step. So I do the same exact thing for A3. I fold back A1. I'm marking the line between the two. And then I'm gonna take my piece from A3 and I'm gonna test it. That looks pretty good to me. Yeah, I think this should be okay. So you can see there, like if you don't have your piece lined up exactly right, um, when you flip it over, you won't have the whole spot covered. And if that happens, then you need to seam rip that, um, replace it on there and try to be, to get it in exactly the right spot. I mean, sometimes I've taken like a couple tries. So here, um, this is good. You'll see, I come right up to this. I don't think, you can barely see it. The dotted line is right there and my piece is right next to it. So I'm really close, but that's good enough. I fold on that and I'm gonna trim this away. Okay. And then I open this up. So now if you, again, if you wanted, you could press these. Um, I'll just like finger press them a little bit. Then I'm gonna fold back, just like we did before with the really big pieces. I'm gonna fold back to mark my line where A4 is and the rest of the block. Once I have that crease there, I can bring my triangle and um, I'm going a quarter of an inch past that line about, I'm kind of making sure that this point and this point are in line. I'll show you what will happen. So that looks good. But like, just say I had this skewed a little bit and I sewed it on and then I flipped it back. You see how like none of this would be covered then? I'd have to pick that out and try again because you're, you're, um, you wouldn't be able to sew that together. Your seams would just, your raw seams would just be in your block. And um, the reason why I do this beginning part where I like fold, it, it like double checks me. And if something doesn't look right, I can take this folded as it wants to be placed and I can just adjust it. So, and that I find so helpful. I, I'm gonna give this a try, I think that looks good. So we'll drop our needle, we'll drop our foot and start sewing here. Back stitch at the beginning and the end. I was like a touch above that line, but it's a really little amount, so I don't think it will matter. See, now I'll just fold this back and give this a trim. Actually, let's double check before we trim that we're, we're all good. 
So that looks good because um, I have a little bit of room here on the other side. So even though you can see a tiny bit of paper, my seams will all be covered. So I would just fold this back and trim this down just a little bit. There we go. And now um, this is made. Then we're gonna take this over just like we did on, on the last block and we're gonna trim all around the entire block on the dotted line and we'll be left with a really nice block like Welcome this. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be talking about something I love to do but it was very intimidating at first, foundation paper piecing. Foundation paper piecing is when you use a paper template to guide where you're stitching and assembling your block. A few years ago, I wrote a free pattern and I have it on my blog, I'll link to it below. It's called the Ray Foundation Paper Piecing Block. This block is a very beginner block I designed with the first time foundation paper piecing quilts are in mind. And I'm gonna walk you through every single step of making that because sometimes when you're starting this new skill, it's really tricky and you just want someone to show you how to do it. So let me show you. First, let's go over a few basics for foundation paper piecing. It's usually abbreviated FPP. It's different than English paper piecing, EPP. I know that can get tricky with all the different names. This is the template for the Ray block. And again, you can download this for free on my blog. Usually when you have a foundation paper piecing pattern, you'll find it on a paper like this that you can print. Now there are special foundation paper piecing papers you can buy. I have purchased them before on Amazon, um, but I have also used regular printer paper and I like them both. I find my, that I'm more likely to use regular printer paper, but you can try them both and just see what works nicely for you. When you have these patterns, often there is something like this at the bottom, a one inch test square. And what that means is when you print this paper, you need to take your ruler and measure this square and make sure it is an inch. Sometimes printers like to scale things uh, when you're printing. And in this case, you don't want it to scale it to a different size. So it's always 100% if, if there is a scaling uh, box to fill in 100% and um, you don't want it to fit to page or you don't want anything like that. So make sure those boxes are unchecked before you print. And then you're gonna measure this square and make sure it's actually one inch. If it is one inch, you can proceed. If it's not one inch, you need to troubleshoot with your printer until this square measures one inch. So for this block, this is a six inch finished block, six and a half inches on this template as it is right here. So if this is measuring one inch, this big square will measure six and a half inches in the case of this block. I'm gonna try to get you close so you can see. All foundation paper piecing patterns have a dark line. Usually that's the inside, that is gonna be the seam of the block when it's sewn in and they have a dotted line around the outside, some kind of dotted line, dash, dot, something. That is the part that you cut on. The space between the solid line and the dotted line is your seam allowance. They are also gonna have letters and numbers. Now this is a really basic pattern. So to make this block, this is all we need. Everything can be pieced in one uh, portion, so you don't have to assemble portions together. In advanced paper piecing patterns, you will have a bunch of different sections. And then at the end of making each section, you'll need to sew those together. So sections are usually designated by a letter of the alphabet in order. All of these pieces have an A on them. There's A1, A2, A3, A4. So for this pattern, because these are all A's, the next thing we're gonna look at are the numbers. And the numbers are the order in which you piece. So one, two, three, and then four. If you had a, an advanced pattern, again, you might have A through, I don't know, N. It could be a ton of different sections and each section will have its own alphabet. You'll piece them together in the orders of the numbers and then you will take all those sections by letter and you will assemble them into a larger block. We're starting super beginner, so we only have this to piece. Oftentimes in foundation paper piecing patterns, there is no fabric cutting instructions. That's because you figure that part out yourself. When you're making a regular quilt block, there is a right size to cut. So if I'm making um, an, a four patch 
and I want it to be four inches finished, that means that each of my squares need to be two inches finished. So there is a right size to cut those. That's why there's cutting instructions in a regular quilt block. In a pattern like this, there is no right size to cut it. Uh, you can't go smaller than you need, but you can go as big as you want. So um, oftentimes the pattern writer lets you decide what's right for you. The smallest you can go is look at a piece and you can go a quarter inch outside of the dark line. That's the smallest you can go because that will be your piece plus a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around it. But you can go as big as you want. And when someone's first starting this skill, I often encourage you to start with big pieces because it's gonna make it a lot easier for you. And once we get sewing, you'll see what I mean. The other thing that's tricky with foundation paper piecing that you kind of have to wrap your mind around of before you start cutting <laughs> is that you're gonna be sewing on this side, the side with the lines and the numbers, you're sewing directly onto this. Your fabric is gonna be on the back and it's gonna be a mirror image. So let me show you. I have this block here. This is the ray block. Uh, this is made, the paper is already removed from this. I cut this out to, just to remove the extra paper. Um, but if I was piecing this block or after I finished, this is what it would look like. One side of my block would be on the paper like this. And of course it's like stitched to the paper so it's not gonna fall off. But this is just, I just wanna show you what it would look like. This is what I see on one side, and the other side is this. So they are mirror images of each other. And when you're cutting your pieces out, if you're trying to be exact, you need to pay attention to that. Because if, if you take your piece like this, and you're trying to see if a scrap will fit, and you just hold it up behind it, and you say, oh, that's going to fit. If you just trim it down a little, um, you'll see the way I have this placed with the print on the same direction as this it's not gonna fit because when I take, go to sew this on my back, it's gonna be the reverse of what I actually need. So let's talk about how you cut your fabric for this. So in the blog post for the pattern, I do give the beginner some measurements. So I have this block cut out two ways and let's go over both of them. I have these rectangles that we can use and these are large oversized rectangles, bigger than what we need, but it's gonna make it easy to piece. And those measurements are in um, that blog post that I'll link to below. So if you start out with those rectangles, when you're first starting, it's easier to use big pieces until you get the hang of it. Uh, so what you wanna do when you're just testing those rectangles, here's one that I have cut, and I'm gonna hold it up to my piece. Now say I want this to be a three. I'm gonna hold it up so that um, the wrong sides are together. So this is the side without lines. And then this is the back of my fabric. I'm gonna hold them up so that those are together. And I'm gonna make sure, now this is nice to do against a window or if you have a light box, you could do that. You wanna make sure that all the edges of your fabric are beyond the lines of the block. And the dark, again, are the ones that we're actually sewing on. And then you want it to be at least a quarter inch beyond those dark lines because that's going to be your seam allowance. So you can see I have plenty, so maybe you can't tell how far out this way it goes, but if you look for my finger, it's like all the way in the middle of A1 kind of there. So I have plenty of room for to use this piece for my A3, way more than I need, but it's great to start with extra fabric when you're learning. So first you're just kind of like gathering your fabric. You can use those cutting directions that I have um, for beginners on my blog to cut your rectangles, but I'm just checking to make sure that all these pieces I have pulled out for my scraps are big enough. And like I said, you want it to be a quarter of an inch beyond the dark line for each piece. So right now I'm checking A1 and I can see that my fabric is beyond those lines. So we're good with that one. I have one more to check here, A2. This is my last uh, cream colored one that I'm doing. And if I just put that there, you can see I'm way beyond it. So this is definitely big enough. And then a uh, four, which is a triangle, you just kind of get a triangle, lay it on it. And then you can see I go all the way out to here. So I have plenty of room for this triangle. So these pieces are all good, large sizes I can use. Now, what if you didn't want to use oversized pieces? What would you do? Then uh, what you do is you use one of these blocks 
one of these blocks to make templates for yourself. Uh, what I did to make templates was I took a scrap piece of paper and I put it on the top of it and I traced the black line of each section. And then I took my ruler and I went a quarter inch beyond that line and I drew a line and then I cut on those. So this is my A3 template with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So this is the smallest that my piece can be. Now I can use this then to cut my fabric out. The one thing that's important to know when you're cutting fabric for these blocks, so you can see this A3, it matches this exactly from the top. When we are sewing this block, the wrong side of our fabric is together with the wrong side of the paper. So you need to make sure that when you're cutting it out using these templates, that you're putting the template on the wrong side of the fabric. Because otherwise, when you go to sew with this, if you, if you had this pattern side up, when you go to sew with this, it's gonna be a mirror image of what you need. So you flip the fabric over to the wrong side, put your template on it so that right side is up, and then you can cut this out with scissors, with a rotary cutter and a roller, whatever works best. Then you would do that for all of the sections of this. So I have A3. Now A3 in this particular block is A2 flipped over. So I didn't make an extra A2 template. I just know that if I flip A3 over, it's A2. So that could be a little tricky at first when you're used to getting cut. So I would pretend that this is the top of my A2 template. So then when I cut, went to cut a piece of A2 out, I would want it this way. And then I would cut that out and uh, then I have my piece for A1, which I actually cut from one of these. I just added a seam allowance on the bottom here and on the sides. So this is my A1. And then I trace a triangle for my A4. That's, this is what you do if you want to be really exact and have no waste at all. Like if I pieced this with these blocks, I would have no waste to trim. The only extra that I have is my quarter inch, which is my seam allowance, so that stays. So that's how you would do a no waste foundation paper piecing method. Um, when you're first starting, I find it's better to start with really big pieces because there's a lot of flipping and movement and the bigger the piece in the beginning, the easier it is to get that right. The next step, once you have your pieces all cut out, is to start sewing. So we're gonna use the really big oversized pieces first because I really think that that's a great tool for learning this method. So I have my piece here. I'm gonna flip my block over to the wrong side and I'm gonna lay this piece on top. Now what I do is I'm gonna hold it up to the light um, and you might not be able to see it great on the camera, but I can see it here in person. And I'm gonna make sure that my fabric is beyond all of the dark lines. So we're starting with A1 because that's our first piece, one. And I'm making sure that it is beyond, at least a quarter of an inch beyond all of those uh, dark lines that I just showed you. And it is. So um, in the beginning when I was first doing this, I found it tricky to hold this first piece on and sew because there's no stitches so if you wanted you could just flap this back a little bit put a little bit of glue stick um i just use you know um, kids glue stick like this i can just show you this is the purple so um i don't love the purple because i've had that show up on my work before so i'm just going to do like two dabs just to show you but you'll just put a little bit of glue on just for the first one and then you'll just push that down. And it's just gonna help hold this center piece in place until you get some stitches on. So we're, now we're gonna work on sewing A1 and A2 together. We got A1 placed. We know that our fabric is covering all this. Now we need to get A2 by it. Now the way I do that is I, I flip it over again and I'm gonna take my piece of fabric the one that's there for A1, and I'm gonna fold it back. And can you see that line? This is the line we're gonna sew on between A1 and A2. I'm gonna get my fabric just right in line with that line, and I'm gonna make a crease with my fingers. This really helps me in deciding where to place the other piece. So now I have a crease line there, and I'm gonna take my second piece of fabric, and I'm gonna overlap it, so these are right sides together, and I'm gonna overlap it at least a quarter of an inch beyond that crease. Then I'm gonna fold it back and I'm looking at the crease. 
I'm opening it right where that crease is and I'm making sure that my fabric is covering the block at least a quarter of an inch in every direction and it is so once that was my little test now once that looked good to me I'm gonna hold this together and I'm trying not to let anything move it's a little bit cumbersome in the beginning to try to like get used to that but uh, it's essential that you don't let anything move and I flipped it over now and we're gonna sew on the line between a1 and a2 now when you're foundation paper piecing you turn your stitch length down I like to use like a 1.6 somewhere around there 1.6 to 1.8 when I drop my foot on my Bernina here I'm using foot 34 D and um, this red line in the middle is even with my needle it's straight in line so I know that if that red line is on this black line then it's gonna be perfect so basically I'm just getting this in order and what I like to do was I, I um, I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end of this stitch line I'm gonna start stitching and once I get to where I want to be I'm gonna back stitch a little bit I'm gonna stitch forward on this line it's okay if I go into the seam allowance before and after a little bit. So here I have like one or two stitches before it. Sometimes I just start right at the point. It just so happened that's where my needle went down and that's okay. And then I'm a little bit beyond it. Um, but now we're gonna take a look at what we have. So we sewed on the front. You can say I stayed straight on that line. Then on the back, I'm gonna have my seam line here. You can see that I have a lot of extra fabric. But I find that this is a really good tool in learning this extra fabric. So now what you do is you fold back your paper. So my paper was like this. I fold on the line that I just sewed. You could take this to your ruler or to your cutting mat and put a ruler with a quarter of an inch and then trim that away. I usually just do this with scissors. It doesn't have to be perfect here. This is the underside of your block and it's not going to interact with anything. So for the underside of, their, of the block, I usually trim that away with scissors. And I'm trying to leave about a quarter of an inch. So now you'll see I have a quarter of an inch left and then we're just gonna open this up. You could, if you wanted at this step, press here with an iron. I wouldn't use steam with this. The steam can distort the paper, but if you wanted to use a hot iron to get this sitting nice and flat, you definitely could do that. I'm gonna just turn it and we're gonna work on the other side. So A3 is my other piece, it's right here. We're gonna repeat that process exactly. So I'm gonna fold on the line between A1 and A3. That's where we're gonna sew. And I need to know about where I should place my fabric. Now I'm gonna go a quarter of an inch past that line and then I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna go right up to that line and fold it back and make sure I have coverage. And I do. So I'm gonna fold it back and just try to hold it in place and flip this over. And now that I have a stitch in here holding this down, these pieces, other pieces aren't slipping like they were when there were no stitches in the block. So there's no need for glue or anything here. You just hold those two together, flip it over and start stitching. I'm gonna secure with a back stitch at the beginning and then I'm just gonna stitch straight along this line between A1 and A3. Now we'll do the same thing that we did before. So we're gonna fold the paper on the line that we just sewed to get it out of the way. And then we're gonna cut here, leaving about a quarter of an inch behind, all the way down the seam line that we just sewed. And you'll see our pieces are quite a bit bigger. I mean, I really did um, start with giant pieces, but it's just gonna give you success for the first block that you're trying. And then after this, you can pair your your cut size pieces down um, so that they're not they're not so oversized and you don't have as much waste you can really see here the difference so we're gonna trim this later and we're gonna have these extras and I save these um, but like I said after you get the hang of this you can start with smaller pieces now the last thing we need to add is a4 so I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna fold this back on the line I'm just gonna try to find a4 now if you'll remember I went past just a stitch or two past the line here so to get to the line that's um, on a4 I pull these I have to pull these stitches out of the paper just a little bit and that's okay so I just pull those stitches out until I'm at that line and then I crease this with my fingers 
Then I have my triangle cut. I'm gonna go a quarter of an inch beyond the line and I'm gonna fold it back to test and I'm making sure I'm covering this point and I am. So now is now I'm gonna hold this still. I'm gonna try to hold everything still and just flip it over and then come to my sewing machine and we're gonna sew on this line here right at the top of A4. So just position that how you like to get your needle right in line with that line. And then you're just gonna stitch along this line here. And when we cut this, you'll see now we have all this extra, but um, we're gonna trim this away again, just like before. I'm gonna just come right here and just cut some of this white off. Now we're gonna, we're gonna cut here to leave a quarter of an inch seam allowance behind. So now we have like all the seam allowances in our block there. We just need to trim this to be the correct size because we oversized everything. The tricky part about foundation paper piecing is the sewing and then flipping. So if you have an exact size piece, you have less wiggle room with how you place this. It needs to be just right so that when you flip it, everything is covered. By starting with a larger piece, you have more wiggle room in your placement. At the beginning of your foundation paper piecing journey, I find getting that placement right is tricky. So by starting with, instead of um, using pieces with a quarter of an inch seam you can do a half inch seam or even an inch seam and then trim down and once you understand the concept and get better at executing the placement and then making sure it's correct when you flip it then you can size down to a quarter of an inch seam a half inch seam whatever um, you feel comfortable with so here is the piece we just made again it's oversized so let's trim it down what you do is you flip it over to the back side and you're gonna get your roller. And I happen to have a six and a half inch roller here, which is pretty perfect because this is a six and a half inch block. So I line the ruler up so that I'm cutting on the dotted line, not the solid line, because we want our seam allowance there. And then I'm just gonna cut these away. And these little pieces, I will save them um, in my scrap bin and I will use those on future projects. After you cut two sides, I always find it's like easiest to flip this. If you had a rotating cutting mat, that would come in really handy in trimming these, but you don't need it. Okay, so we trimmed it away. And now we have our block, which is really beautiful and perfect. And it enabled us, foundation paper piecing enables you to get odd side piece, odd size pieces pieced and placed perfectly in the block without actually having to cut out this piece from a template and um, piece it in there perfectly. The, since you're sewing on the paper, you're getting straight lines every time. Um, it's a really handy tool. And again, this is a super beginner block, but there are crazy blocks out there that are foundation paper piecing that you just can't even believe they're pieced. Um, really, really magnificent stuff. So this is a beginner version of it, but you can do so much with this. And now that, that this is pieced, you can choose if you wanna take your papers out before you sew this into a quilt or after. Um, it works either way. Um, to take your pieces out, your paper out, you would just, like I usually just fold on one of the seams and then I that kind of like the needle kind of perforated this. So you're just gonna tear this away. It's gonna come right off. Uh, if you were to leave your papers on your block, that would be fine. You would just have some really tiny pieces in your seam allowance. You might need a tweezer to get those out, but you definitely can do it. In the beginning, I found I always left my block, my papers on my block um, until I had it sewed onto a quilt. I felt like that was just the method I could handle. And um, as I've progressed, I always take the papers out now before I sew it into a quilt top. So really, it's you can do it both ways. I've done it both ways successfully. It's just your preference on what you wanna do. And here is our block then with the papers removed. You can see our seams look good. This was where we cut our quarter inch seam allowances. They're really nice. And um, this block is ready to be used. 
Now that I showed you how to piece one with oversized pieces, let me show you how I piece one. So with exact size. So I, I'm using the templates that I showed you earlier. I use these templates to cut out all my pieces. And I went just like a touch bigger than a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Somewhere between, somewhere around three eighths of an inch, but it doesn't really matter. These don't have to be exact. That's like the beauty of this. So, um, I am starting with my A1 and I'm going to take my A1 and I set it on there. You can see I have much more of an exact piece. I'm like close to the edge, but what I want to do is I just hold it up. It might be difficult again to see this on the camera, but I'm making sure that I'm past every line by at least a quarter of an inch. And I am, so um, I could glue this down or I could leave it. Now my A2 is on this side. Just like we did before, I'm going to fold this back. I'm finding the line and I'm just holding it just to make a crease mark. Once I have that crease, I'm finding my A2 piece, which is this one. I'm going to lay it on top and I'm just making sure I'm about a quarter of an inch beyond it. And then I fold it open to test it. I'm making sure that I'm covering every part of this. So I think I want to just give this a touch of a slide up like that. I think that that looks better to me. I have this top corner covered now before it was like sticking out. So I'm gonna hold it together and flip it over. Try not to move everything. That's a little tricky, but you get used to it. And I'm gonna drop my needle here and sew on the line between um, A1 and A2. At the beginning and the end of this, I am back, back stitching. And now you'll see, um, I do have a little bit more than a quarter of an inch I'm gonna trim some of this away that was closer to a half of an inch down there and I'm gonna trim this little bit away and I have this piece on so now this sides on again if you wanted to press with an iron here you could press uh, I'm gonna just go ahead on to the next step so I do the same exact thing for a3 I fold back a1 I'm marking the line between the two and then I'm going to take my piece from A3 and I'm going to test it. That looks pretty good to me. Yeah, I think this should be okay. So you can see there, like, if you don't have your piece lined up exactly right, um, when you flip it over, you won't have the whole spot covered. And if that happens, then you need to seam rip that, um, replace it on there and try to be to get it in exactly the right spot I mean, sometimes I've taken like a couple tries so here um, this is good you'll see I come right up to this I don't think you can barely see it the dotted line is right there and my piece is right next to it so I'm really close but that's good enough I fold on that and I'm gonna trim this away okay and then I open this up so now if you again if you wanted you could press these um, I'll just like finger press them a little bit then I'm gonna fold back just like we did before with the really big pieces I'm gonna fold back to mark my line where a4 is and the rest of the block once I have that crease there I can bring my triangle and um, I'm going a quarter of an inch past that line about I'm kind of making sure that this point and this point are in line I'll show you what will happen. So that looks good. But like, just say I had this skewed a little bit and I sewed it on and then I flipped it back. You see how like none of this would be covered then? I'd have to pick that out and try again because you're, you're, um, you wouldn't be able to sew that together. Your seams would just, your raw seams would just be in your block. And um, the reason why I do this beginning part where I like fold, it, it like double checks me and if something doesn't look right, I can take this folded as it wants to be placed and I can just adjust it. So, and that I find so helpful. I'm going to give this a try. I think that looks good. So we'll drop our needle. We'll drop our foot and start sewing here. Back stitch at the beginning and the end. I was like a touch above that line, but it's a really little amount, so I don't think it will matter. See, now I'll just fold this back and give this a trim. Actually, let's double check before we trim that we're, we're all good. 
So that looks good because um, I have a little bit of room here on the other side. So even though you can see a tiny bit of paper, my seams will all be covered. So I would just fold this back and trim this down just a little bit. There we go. And now um, this is made. Then we're gonna take this over just like we did on, on the last block and we're gonna trim all around the entire block on the dotted line and we'll be left with a really nice block like this. I hope you found that this tutorial helped you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Foundation paper piecing is a wonderful skill that I think every quilter should give a try and learn. It's so neat. And the advanced blocks that you can make with this are just amazing. So here's the block we made today. And again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks for following along.